You may not have heard much about it, but this week the Coalition Government set itself a big goal to totally change homeless services in Victoria. Housing Minister Wendy Lovell admits the current system is failing the more than 20,000 homeless people across our state. Part of the solution is more housing, but the government doesn't yet have a plan to provide that. Mother of four, Alex, has been trying to find a home for her family in Melbourne for the past 18 months. We're still homeless and waiting. It's like we've only just gone on the, the public housing list. Getting on that waiting list took 12 months, just another recent challenge for this family. I have my disabled child here, my nine-year-old here and my 16-year-old here, baby across. In March, Alex told us how her family had been in a car after being forced out of the private rental market. I felt like I was a really unfit mother. Today, Alex has a new job, but her family is still in transitional housing. She needs a permanent home that's suitable for her 12-year-old son, who has cerebral palsy. It's been a big strain on... It was a big strain on my relationship. We ended up separating and... And that's been tough on everybody, but um, you just have to, because if the kids see that you're not coping, then they, yeah, they react and so you just shrug it off. But yeah, I have my moments <laughs> when they're not around. <laughs> Some tears. In the past five years, the number of families with children accessing homeless services in Victoria has grown by nearly 60%. We need new thinking and a new approach. Housing Minister Wendy Lovell's so-called action plan released on Wednesday states what many already know. The current service system is not getting to the root cause of homelessness. The minister is promising to turn that around. She set up an advisory council with a four-year plan to review and reform the system. Part of that is changing the way programs are funded, starting with $25 million for services that deliver results, such as actually finding people permanent homes. The focus on outcomes is a really amazing an important thing to do rather than as it is now it's more um, just counting people who flow through services. This government's put itself out there and has said we'll fund outcomes. Now that immediately creates uh, an obligation to have a dialogue with the sector about well what are those things that are required to meet those outcomes. What will you say to them in, in, in that dialogue? What do you need to, to get those outcomes? Well it's fairly simple you know you need, you need good housing, safe housing, and good support services. But one thing the government is yet to reveal is how it intends to provide more affordable housing. It's promised but has yet to deliver what it calls a housing framework for low-income Victorians. What we say is that you will never address the question of homelessness unless you have a commitment to the supply of public and social housing. And in the last budget, this government provided not one extra dollar for new public housing acquisition. And those who help the homeless are waiting to hear when homes being built with federal stimulus money will be ready and how many of those will go to the homeless. What we need to see is a way of having that um, increased housing, several thousand properties in Victoria each, each year, continue to come online. We need a st strategy for achieving that. More houses. Um, for families, more help for families because units and high rises, yeah, no, they need to do, they need to put more money into houses, basically, because there just isn't enough. And I spoke to Housing Minister Wendy Lovell at Parliament House. Well, Minister, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Josie. It's a pleasure. In March, we spoke to a mother of four, Alex, who had been living in her car with her children, including her 12-year-old son who has cerebral palsy. Six months on, she's only just gone onto the public housing waiting list and is still technically homeless. Is that an acceptable situation? 
Well, I believe that this mother is now in transitional housing, so that means that family have been, the family have been housed. But this is the type of family that can be better helped by our new action plan. Our new action plan is about bringing services together to support um, families and individuals who are suffering from homelessness. This specific family's need, though, is for a permanent home, something that probably thousands of Victorians can relate to. Isn't housing the issue? Well, housing is not the only issue that, uh, that people who are suffering homelessness face, and housing is one important factor of it. But to house someone and just leave them there without support services doesn't solve the underlying causes of why they're homeless in the first place. And as I've said, for many people that's mental health issues, drug and alcohol issues. Um, for some families, it's family violence issues. Your action plan refers to the housing strategy that you're working mm -hmm. on at the moment. When will it be publicly released? Well, we're hoping for some time next year to have um, a final housing framework. The housing framework is about um, a whole new direction for public and social housing in Victoria. It's about how it will be delivered into the future. We have a lot of consultation with the sector to do on this and a lot of consultation with the community. We're not going to release it just for the sake of releasing a strategy like the former government did. There's been a nearly 60% increase over the past five years of families with children accessing services. Your centrepiece projects regarding homeless services are interim housing projects for young people, but they're not even being built yet. Will they be up and running in this term of government? Well, I think the increase in um, the people accessing services shows you that what's been done in the past has not been working. We've been spending more than $160 million a year on ha homelessness services but numbers have been increasing. So we're shifting the focus. What about domestic violence? Almost half the people looking for help in, in homeless services are women and children fleeing domestic violence. What specific part of the action plan will target that? Well, the innovation programs that are put forward, projects that are put forward, um, we're hoping to get some really strong um, innovation projects around the domestic violence um, sector. And this is about, the innovation projects are about partnerships. So they're about housing providers partnering with domestic violence specialists, partnering with drug and alcohol specialists, partnering with mental health specialists, so that one service is not trying to be all things to everybody, but we're getting the best um, services possible delivered to these people. On those innovation projects, you put $25 million towards what you call programs that, that are providing results, not just services. Does that mean some service providers could be at risk of losing their funding if they're not getting those results? Well, this is about changing the way services are funded. The, the um, way services have been funded in the past, actually it, um, it rewarded failure because they were funded for throughput. So people were going through the system, churning through the system time and time again. The, the service sector often, often referred to it as the revolving door. People came in, they had 12-week episode of support, they went out the back door and back in the front door straight away, and so the numbers were counted over and over again for the same person. This, the action plan innovation projects will be um, funded for outcomes. So the real test of whether a um, innovation project is successful is when we get someone moving through that system once and once only. Do you see that funding model spreading throughout, the, not just in these specific projects that, you, that you're looking to fund now, do you see it spreading throughout the whole homeless service sector? Well, we're running this side by side with the old, um, with the old service um, pr uh, provision as well to see which one does work best and to see if we can produce the results we're looking for out of this new, um, the new funding model. We're also, um, as part of the action plan, we have a ministerial advisory council that is going to look at sector reform. The sector have been telling me there needs to be a change. They have a lot of ideas on how it can be changed. They're the experts. We're looking to them to give us the advice on how we can better fund homelessness services into the future. You said that the current system isn't working, it's failing, it's not getting to the root of what causes homelessness. But according to your action plan time frame, there won't actually be any reform of the system until 2014-2015. Where's the sense of urgency? All of these things do take time to implement, Josie. There's a lot of consultation that goes on um, around producing a new um, funding model and of producing a new um, way that we address the needs of the homeless people. So we're running the innovation projects as a first step to it. The Ministerial Advisory Council is looking at sector reform 
and um, that will take some time. I, I don't apologise for that. I want to get it right. You've refused to join the federal government and commit to halving homelessness by 2020. Do you still feel those targets are meaningless? Well, it's not that I refuse to join the federal government. We, this state has actually signed up to the, to the first step of that, which is to reduce homelessness by 7% um, by 2013. Um, no one has actually signed up to the halving homelessness um, ideal at this stage. Um, the, the first stage is to reduce homelessness by 7% by 2013, and we're working towards that. Wendy Lovell, thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much.